putting our please at the beginning. If you like, please watch, subscribe, share, comment, etc. Enjoy Lux's art. You can find more of it on Tumblr, Twitter, DeviantArt, etc. Want to support this channel? We have Patreon and Coffee. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 7 and 8. Interesting episodes. Nice episodes. Getting a lot more into things, and I like the way Yang handled the explanation. I like the two things that they have to do to keep her to stay. Is One, as long as Ruby's here, I'm staying. And two, no more lies. Or stretching the truth, or... Or half-truths, or anything else. But Ozpin didn't promise. He said understood. Yeah, because he's probably going like, I have to keep some things for now. And Miss Long is going to kill me later, but for now... I also love, for now, rest and relaxation. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Oscar. Yes. And how even Yang is comfortable enough with all of this to laugh at his reaction. Mm -hmm. And we got more development on Yang and how she may swing one way or the other. So it sounds like Blake attracts a lot of people who swing that way. Because Blake not only... Uh, attracted Yang, who apparently swings towards girls, but also Ilya, who swings that way. Also, it sounds more and more like either Blake was too much involved with Adam and swings both ways, but only saw Adam at the time, or she's straight, which is going to be another major disappointment if I'm right about the fact that Yang is not. So that's going to be more interesting threads between all those characters. Yes, but this also gives us an area for Ilya's redemption and turning around and helping Blake because she's now in the role of jilted lover. Mm. You know, unrequited love. So at what point are things going to go so far that her feelings for Blake will override her drive for what's best for the Faunus? Because it's real interesting how they're setting stuff up. And this is why I'm perfectly fine with there not being a lot of fighting in this season. There's more story structure going on. There's more connection between the characters. There's more reasons being given for the characters doing things. And we got more backstory explanation from Ozpin and Crow and exactly how that works. And we got confirmation on the fact that Yes, Ozpin was the magician who gave the four maidens his magic. So, yay, one of our theories proven correct. So far. Let's see which ones get proven next. <laughs> like, it's going to be really interesting to see when or if Salem was a maiden at one point and how she interacted with the maidens if she wasn't. And it sounds like. Not all of the Maidens have always used their power. Especially it sounds like the original Maidens. Not all of the Maidens use their power for good. Which is entirely possible. Because Osbin is being punished. So I'm assuming that his life as the magician from the fable was his original life. So he gave away his magic and then it was abused. Was that his crime that he's punished for? Mm. that he must keep being reborn until he can keep all four of the maidens safe and on the path of good. Mm. Or somehow the magic gets back into him. Mm -hmm. Especially since it sounds like his magic is dwindling every reincarnation. Which makes sense because each incarnation he's becoming more and more of an amalgamation of all of the people that he had to merge with. And if Oscar is any example, a lot of those probably weren't magicians. Not that anyone apparently believes in magic in this modern time, but did they even really have powerful semblances? Yeah, or were they even powerful people at all? Maybe that's part of his punishment. It's always someone who is not the best in the world. But that seems highly unfair if he's cursed to keep doing it over until he fixes it. 
And it sounds like with each incarnation, he's less able to do so because of the dwindling magic, which is why he's pulled others in as Ozpin and perhaps has pulled others in in the past. Hmm. And was his name always Ozpin? Or does he take on the name of the person he eventually merges with? Yeah. So will he eventually be known as Oscar? Or will he take over and be Ozpin? Which will be interesting to find out because Ozpin did say it was an amalgamation and a merging. So. Hmm. And I just remember the fact that Ozpin is based on the Wizard of Oz. And that's a magician. Um, air quotes on magician. Yeah. You know, he's the wizard. He's a wizard. Magician. Magic. Yeah, I see where that comes from. Though Glinda Goodwitch is also from the Wizard of Oz tale. Yeah, so that was the whole thing. You had Ozbin and Professor Goodwitch, both Oz characters. Mm -hmm. Which is now making me wonder, is like, are there any other connections with Glinda the Good Witch or other connections with Oz that will help us figure out more theories? Probably not by looking at the movies, because those are always watered down compared to the books, and there is more than one Wizard of Oz book, but most people are only familiar with the classic version, and a smaller number of people are familiar with the one with the dancing headless maidens. There's not a lot of in-between. And like you said, it's watered down. There's definitely a whole lot more you could pull from, from the original Wizard of Oz, because I've actually listened to that book. Well, just the one book. There's more than one book. Like I said, the original Wizard of Oz compared to the first movie. Because there's a lot in there. Any talkie points you want to go over? Well, per usual, you tend to run towards the end and then work your way backwards. We totally glossed over the dinner and them all catching up and sharing what's going on and all the different callbacks. Because until they said it, I forgot that John was temporarily known as Vomit Boy. In the first and second episode, the first episode at the very end is when I believe he threw up. And the second episode is when Yang called him Vomit Boy. And it was kind of nice that Oscar and Crow didn't intrude, even though what did they get to have for dinner? Because those six kind of ate everything. Yeah, and poor John. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I also love it. It's like, so now we're doing nickname callbacks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? The Ice Queen liked it. She's like... Ah! And I know you touched on a little bit the interaction with Yang and Weiss, but it was nice to hear more of Weiss's story. Mm -hmm. And how her mom went downhill. Yes, because we had our own theories on when the father did something and what he did to drive her to alcoholic oblivion. I mean, we all kind of felt that he probably married just for the name, but once again, now canon. Confirmed. Yes, on Weiss's 10th birthday. So Winter's older and the Brad is younger. Don't know how much younger. Definitely not 10 years younger. Only a couple. Hmm. Yeah, more stuff's in my head, but it's not well formed enough for me to actually say. <laughs> but there's just so much going on in these episodes. If you're bored, you're not watching the show the right way. <laughs> Uh, if you're bored, this is obviously not the right type of show for you because there is so much happening. New character interactions, new plots, new details about old plots, stuff being revealed about the old plots, stuff being confirmed from the old plots. So much has been building for a while. And so interesting to see that Mercury, Emerald, Cinder, and... One of Salem's male generals, sorry, the only name I have down now is Hazel, I don't have this guy's name memorized, are showing up at Raven's camp looking for Raven. Because they asked for Raven. They didn't ask for the maiden. So are they going to negotiate with Raven? Is the goal the maiden or is the goal Raven? Because in that part that you mentioned in the last episode, all we need is a miracle. Mm -hmm. Which apparently that line happens right when... Raven and Yang are facing away from each other. And Yang looks pretty stoic, and Raven actually seems to be slightly smiling. I love how when you were watching the second episode, you were listening more carefully to the lyrics this time. Well, I was trying to do it more on the first one, and I'm like, did I hear that right? And then when we got to the second episode, I was at the 
wrong place in my mind of when I needed to really focus on the lyrics. Because I thought there was something like along the lines right when they show Oscar slash Ozpin. So right before we get to the part with the you've been messing with gods. Something about the dead that the only person who could handle the problem is the dead. If that line is true and we hear it again, that could also indicate Pira and Penny. Yes. It's interesting that it is played during when we're looking at Oscar slash Ozpin because the implication can also be that one must fall. You know, kind of a hold chrono trigger. One will fall. Hmm. Eventually, one day, I'll play that game enough to actually figure that out because all I've ever played of Chrono Trigger is the first section and a little bit into um, one of the... Actually, I've, I've played it enough to get to the future world and that was it. Ah, uh, I played it to the point where the part that I knew what was going to come that I wasn't happy about occurred because I was using a guide because there's so many things that you miss opportunities if you don't do them in the right timeline. Mm. So I was using a guide and I was reading too far ahead and I'm like, wait, you're going to do what now? No, I object. <laughs> and after that event occurred, I like beat somebody up 16 times without saving just to get it out of my system. And I love how Nora was like, I was perfect. <laughs> what about that time you spilled the drink on? I was perfect. <laughs> It was like, yes, Yang at the dance. Thank you so much for mentioning the dance. Playing music on her phone. <laughs> Scroll. Whatever. It's basically a cell phone. And that's when Crow and Oscar comes in and Crow goes, how can kids be so loud at the dinner table? <laughs> oh, basically, how can you guys be so loud just eating dinner? Because they weren't just eating dinner. They were having an arm wrestling contest and playing music and having deep discussions. Thank you, Ren, for getting so you know, intense there. I love how, I think it was Ruby who went, so did Nora win? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody technically won that because neither arm was pushed down to the table. Nora was forcibly ejected from the table. And I also like that Yang is now comfortable enough with the arm that she could play that prank. Mm -hmm. And apparently it has a forcible eject feature so she can fire punches. <laughs> Even more so than she did already. Though she will be um, left disarmed. If you just heard a thud, that was Ember hitting the floor from the force of my pun. He exaggerates. It was only an overdone eye roll. <laughs> eh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't an anime classic face fault, but hey. <laughs> so yeah, lots of really nice interactions with characters. And just the way that episodes were ending, I'm like, more? More? Can we? Just a little? Oh. <laughs> yes, because these two were a little shorter. Also, the attack on the Belladonna's property. We're starting to see how kicktail her parents actually are. Because the mother just picked up that gun and started firing and yelling at the guys. And she obviously knew how to use the gun. Obviously. And then the father starts throwing henchmen around like they're toothpicks. Also, he looks like he's about to go Super Saiyan 4 or like full on were creature transformation because he's always looked rather human. And he's always such a calm person, except when he's interacting with Sun. But even that's relatively calm. Mm -hmm. More of, I'm going to play angry over protective father because you are ne'er do well and you're getting near my daughter. And then, okay, you're threatening my family? That's the last straw. <laughs> hair come from and why are you ripping my limbs off and beating me to death with them no, no reason i was just curious <laughs> uh like you said the whole group of those four showing up at ravens and that poor poor guy he needs to learn to keep his mouth shut severely because i mean he's already gotten beat down twice if i was him at this point i'd be just like eh, walk right on in I'd be like, uh, let me see if she's available. May I ask who's calling? <laughs> so once again, it's like, well, are they going to try to recruit Raven? Are they trying to use Raven to get the maiden? Or are they going to try to recruit the bandits as a whole, like they did the White Fang? Where Cinder and 
mercury and emerald showed up to treat with them and once adam refused them they tore the place up and then asked the exact same questions again yeah this is going to be real interesting because if there's any threat i have a feeling raven will just go one moment walk out portal come with me maiden <laughs> <laughs> and then cinder Lem will be sitting there going she's taking a really long time to go to the bathroom i know <laughs> Yes, because we now know canonically that Raven doesn't have to pass through the portal for the portal to work. And we also know that more than one person can go through the portal as well as objects. So Raven could grab the best of the loot and the maiden and hightail it. Or she could go send the maiden off to one of her other contact points and then retrieve her later. It all depends on how, I want to say right now, negotiations with Quotation marks around them? Go. <laughs> yes. Because I'm pretty sure Raven Brownwin is not in the best mood right now, having been rejected by her erstwhile daughter. Never mind that she left Yang how long ago. And I have a feeling it really depends on how she feels. Like, do I want to work with these guys to get what I want? Or are they just going to mess with me? No matter what I do. Hmm. It's like, so is it better to agree and backstab them later? Or do I agree and actually work with them? Or do I just beat the tar out of them right now? Yeah, because I have a feeling Raven's a whole lot stronger than Adam was. And even though there's four really strong fighters there, I have a feeling there's other people that could put up a good fight. I'm thinking right now it's relatively even because Cinder's a maiden, Raven has a maiden, then you have Mercury and Emerald, so all of whom we've seen somewhat in action. So the question is really the level of the final guy because he seems to be almost more of a doctor type at some levels because he was called back because Tyrion needed a new tail. Hmm. So he has some medical expertise, which could also make him incredibly dangerous because the people who know how to put you back together know how to take you apart. Yeah. Oh boy. Things could get messy. Probably the best kind of messy, at least for us to watch, not for Raven or the Maiden. Pretty much not for anyone involved. Yeah. It's going to be a very pretty thing to watch, not a very pretty thing to be involved with. <laughs> And something I've noticed is they're focusing a lot more on eyes in this season. It's how eyes change color, how they focus on people who has what eye color. They're doing a lot more headshots that are really uh, making you look towards the eyes of the individual, even though we naturally look there. I think they're cutting headshots in such a way that you're really focusing on the eyes, especially with certain characters. Mm-hmm. And I think now that they have the improved budget and the buildup of assets, there's more for us to see in those animations than there would be of, oh, yeah, Ruby has silver eyes. Like, no, look at her eyes. I also, that also reminds me of when Yang goes, I'm staying with Ruby because she always seems to know where. <laughs> know the right thing to do. That may be part of her power. <laughs> it could be. It could be. And also going back to eyes, yeah, Yang went red-eyed there during a simple argument with her friends. That's why both of them were like, whoop! Yeah, like, Yang, uh, tone it down a notch. Yeah, you're gonna start setting things on fire? That would be bad. You're lucky we don't live in a town that's flammable. Also, these episodes blew our theory out of the water that, like, got to Mistral because she was captured and sent there. That was stated that that was going to be the plan. And that was our theory of how she was going to get there. Well, I have an updated version of that theory. Instead of her being captured the way that she almost got captured in this episode, how about she surrenders? She may surrender in exchange for her family. Mm-hmm. So she gets back, finds her family in a um, desperate situation, and goes, I'll go with you if you leave them alone. Or at least in a situation that they couldn't get out of no one's really injured or anything but they're like pinned against the wall as it were you know kind of like how the intro song says yeah well that back to the wall part actually that lyric is when weiss is on screen hmm. and 
that's when she could come in and then even if they promise and then they do the usual backstab, Blake could be out of the scene and they go to do the backstab and then the parents and son break out. Even if the bad guys were going to do the backstab of we're going to kill them anyways, but we're going to make it look like we're leaving them alone. Well, I'm thinking if it goes down that way, it's not only the they're going to backstab, but I think it's going to be as soon as Blake's out of sight, the fight just restarts and the family now has an advantage because they got a chance to rest and physically move. And since the White Fang just agreed, they're not expecting the Belladonnas to immediately start fighting back again. Yeah, that's that's pretty close to what I was thinking might actually happen. Like, okay, Blake's gone. We're going to... Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's what we were waiting for, too, to kick your tail. Because <laughs> we now have the advantage. You guys are closer to us. You're not paying attention. We're good. Not like we're going to let ourselves be captured and everything. That would be stupid. I mean, you saw how hard we fought before. We gave you the idea we wouldn't. Exactly. Any more we want to go over? Oh, I got nothing right now. Though, as I probably go over a quick summary... <laughs> My end thoughts are, great episode, nice moving forward with the plot, more background story, awesome. Can't wait for the next two. And this has been our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 7 and 8. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos, all that kind of stuff. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, couple Mastodon servers, Reddit, and wherever else on the internet he finds to post it. Really enjoy Lux's art and would like a customized image of your own? Check the link below for pricing and availability. Pricing stays pretty consistent, availability subject to change. Don't have a particular image in mind but still want to help us out financially and feel able to do so? Check out our Patreon and Coffee links. Patreon starts out at a dollar, which gives you access to monthly sketches and the ability to vote on future monthly sketches. Coffee works in increments of three and is a one-time donation. Thanks again for listening.